Dear Chairman, thank you for invitation to present at European Bifurcation Club 2020. The title of my presentation is Broken Iris Catheter and Deformed Stand in Left Main. I don't have any potential conflicts of interest to declare. A 62 year old gentleman presented with recurrent episodes of central chest pain since two days. His electrocardiogram showed ST elevation in anterior leads with reciprocal changes in 2 3 ADF. His blood pressure was 90 systolic and saturation was 90% on room air. A bedside echo showed ejection fraction of 40%. So the plan was to offer the patient primary PCR. He was loaded with antiplatelet and was transferred to cath lab. A right radial access was obtained. A diagnostic angiogram showed LED diffusely disease from ostium and subtotally occurred with thrombus. Circumflex and RCA were angiographically normal. So we are dealing with the distal left main bifurcation Medina 010 niche. So a seven extra backup guide was used, a vessel was wired, and multiple runs of thrombus aspiration was performed. It restored the flow and patient became hemodynamically stable with the relief from chest pain and resolution of ST issue. So at this point, we performed an imaging evaluation to estimate the vessel diameters and length of the lesion. We identified a distal reference vessel diameter at middle lady, just distal to the second septal branch. The distal reference vessel diameter was 3.6 millimeters. There was diffuse mixed plaque extending from middle lady all the way to the ostium, or the areas of superficial calcium. The ostium of the lady had significant plaque burden, which precluded the attempt, any attempt to place stent exactly at the LED ostium. The distal left main had pump plaque from 1 to 4 o'clock position, but there was no luminal compromise. The left main uh, reference vessel diameter was 4.5 millimeters. The total length of the lesion estimated was 42 millimeters. We didn't have a 42 millimeter stent in the shelf, so our plan was to stent the distal part with a 3.5 stent and to perform a crossover stent from left main to LED as a provincial side branch stenting strategy across the circumference. So the lesion was uh, pre dilated and distal part was stented with 3.5 to 24 millimeter dragotic stent at 40 atmospheres. Distal most part was the pre post dilated with 3.5 mm non combined balloon at 20 atmospheres and proximal part was approximated with a 4 mm non combined balloon at 16 atmospheres. After this, we placed another 4 into 18 mm dragotic stent from left main to a lady overlapping with the first stent across the circumflex, which was deployed at 14 atmospheres, and pot was performed with 4.5 mm non-combined balloon at 20 atmospheres. Angiogram showed TME3 flow in LAD, and there was no angiographic compromise of the side branch. I was pullback was uh, obtained. I was pullback showed well-expanded stent in the LAD part. But when we came to the left main part, there were floating struts across the circumflex host and there were areas of minor position in the distal of main, just proximal to the circumflex host. So at this point, our plan was to recross the circumflex, perform a Q-sig balloon dilatation, and to finish off with a report. To estimate the circumflex vessel diameter, we maneuvered an IVAS catheter into the circumflex. And uh, the IVAS estimated circumflex diameter was 3.5 millimeters, and there were struts across the circumflex host. But when we attempted to pull back the I was catheter from the circumflex. There was uh, some resistance. And when the catheter came out, we noted that about distal 15 mm of the catheter was missing. And for comparison, a normal catheter with wire in situ is shown in the lower part. The fluoroscopy confirmed the broken I was catheter trip lying from left main into the circumflex. And in the process, we lost the uh, access to the circumflex wire. It had popped out. The fluoroscopic evaluation confirmed that the left main part of the stent was deformed and had peeled away from the vessel wall. And close evaluation of the uh, fibers pulled back from circumflex to left main indeed confirmed the broken catheter tip lying at 11 o'clock position. We had a wire across into the LED, so we tried to redeploy the left main part of the stent. We tried to pass a 1 mm balloon, but uh, even a 1 mm balloon was not getting across the proximal left main. So the next plan was to cross into a circumflex through the penis stent space and enlarge it and try to retrieve the catheter uh, with a snare. So we crossed into a circumflex uh, behind the stent uh, with a great difficulty with the field of C wire. Enlarge the space with a 2 mm balloon, but the snare catheter could not be negotiated across the proximal left main part. So the plan B was to exclude the IVS catheter from the circulation. For that, we enlarge the penis stent space and crush the left main part with the 2.5 and then with the 3.5 mm non-compliant balloons. And then we recrossed into the LED, then pre-directed stent stuck with the 2.5 balloon, 
performed a kissing balloon with 3.5 in circumflex and 4 mm in LED. Placed a stent from left main into the circumflex with 3.5 into 80 mm trigonotic stent, uh, crushing the left main part of stent for a second time and thus excluding the broken catheter from the loom. Then subsequently, pot was performed, recrossed into the LED, pre-directed the struts with a 2.5 balloon, kissing balloon was performed with 4 mm in LED and 3.5 in circumflex, and repot was performed with a 4.5 mm balloon. Final angiographic results showed good flow in LED and circumflex. The eye was pulled back from LED to left main confirmed well expanded and opposed tender the LED. We obtained a minimal stand area of about 8.9 in the distal part, 9.9 .9 in the mid portion, and 13 mm squared at the ostium of the LED. Coming to the left main part, we notice some protruding crushed stun studs between one to three o'clock position, but the lumen obtained was 13.6 millimeter squared at that point, and proximal part, we obtained a minimum stand area of 18 mm squared. The eye was pulled back from circumflex to a left main, uh, confirmed well expanded and opposed stand in the circumflex. The proximal uh, circumflex minimum stand area was 10 mm squared, and at ostium, we obtained a minimum stand area of 10.7. The eye was pulled back from circumflex to left main, confirmed well expanded and a post stent in the left main part. So, what are the learning points from this case? The stent was obviously malopposed in distal left main with stunts plotting across the circumflex host. So, we should have probably uh, uh, attempted a uh, Missing balloon dilatation followed by report before attempting to maneuver the IMS catheter into the side branch. There are some data which showed that if you have floating struts across the side branch, it predicts the future restenosis. And if you uh, try to maneuver an imaging catheter in the context of malopost stent struts, the catheter can get caught within the malopost stent struts and the catheter can get fractured. And most often the fracture happens at interface where guide, where guide wire exit port is located. And with regard to the interrogation of side branch, we have some evidence to show that Physiological cutoffs predict uh, future event rates uh, with, the hard, with regard to hard endpoints. And imaging uh, endpoints, uh, but whether the intervention based on imaging endpoints, whether it improves the uh, long-term outcomes, we have to await for further data. Thank you for patient here.